Hi guys, you are joining me here at the Barrett Jackson Car Auction at the Orange County Fairgrounds. The auctions start tomorrow and go for the next three days. It should be really exciting. Let's go check it out. Hi, you're joining me here with Diana Farmer from JB Hill Cowboy Boots. And I was walking by and I love cowboy boots. And so clearly I had to talk to her. Diana, tell me a little bit about JB Hill. It's been around for about 16 years. Its specialty is all handmade, custom made to measure. So customers get to do something that they don't usually get to do when they go into a cowboy boot store by picking out a boot and choosing their leathers, their toes, their heels, and be parting the you know part of the design process. So who's making them? Because you're saying they're all handmade. Right. We have about 13 boot makers. Our boot makers are artisans. They've been doing it since they're about eight, nine years old. They're 50, 60, 70 years old, and you know, this is their craft. They've spent their life developing and making it, you know, their their livelihood. So tell me a little bit, like, for example, I have a lot of applique boots. Tell me a little bit about the work process of this. Well, this boot is what you'd call an overlaid boot. This has got a wingtip on it. This is a very traditional cowboy boot when you're looking at the foxing on the toes, whereas there's other boots that now have gone into the processes of hand tooling, embossing, things like that. So there's lots of different steps in boot making depending upon the style that you want to choose. Well, yeah, because I have a few vintage boots like this with the shorties, kind of the Patsy Klein style right. with the appliques. Okay, so then what about this one I thought was gorgeous and I don't own one like this yet. So right. tell me about this process. This one is actually an embossed process. We have a lot of clients that have the hand tooled but they can't necessarily justify or they don't want to be able, you know, they can't afford the, the hand tooled because it is a pricier boot. This has the hand tooled look so it's a pressed on look versus the hand tooling which is what you're seeing on this boot here which is hand tooled. So there's a lot more labor intent. In Which is my favorite boot here. Um, it is an alligator boot with hand tooling. And I don't even know if you can see the detail, but it's amazing. So tell me a little bit of, about the difference of the workflow of hand tooling versus embossing. Well, you know, you're, as far as the hours or the labor? No, the actual method of it. Well, you know, when you're doing embossing, it's a plate. It's kind of like a cookie cutter in a sense that it just plates the design on where this is actually you wet the leather you actually then tool into it carve into it you know it's just a lot of detail many many hours and and this is definitely a, a craft on this not anybody can do that I mean this is amazing I'm sure you've seen this before and taken for granted that this is hand done this is actual carved leather I mean I have a fair share of the pieces and I don't think I really considered how much work is involved. And as you know, I'm a mommy and I love cowboy boots, so I got really excited when I saw these. So tell me a little bit about these. These were created, these are actually um, baby boots that are made exactly like the full size boots. So every single step that's taken in the full size boots is done in the little boots from the hand carved collars to lasting them. So every single step that's done in the big boot this is also done in the small boot. Well, and I'm sure it's harder because like with any miniature, you're having to do the same work, but on a much smaller, more detailed scale. Yeah, absolutely. They can't get their hands down into them, so it's very difficult. Now, do the, do the babies like to wear them? Do you find that, they're, that they allow them being worn or do they become decoration for the show? It, it just be, it's a decoration for the show. Um, also, we had a, a client of ours that actually, as a, as a a gift, I should say, to us. She actually went to a photography studio, had her a boot picture taken, a picture taken with her son between her legs, wearing her J.B. Hill boots. And if you look in Cowboys and Indians this this month, actually, that image we turned it into an ad, and we made her a pair of these boots as a thank you. Aww, you know, so cute. Yeah, because. I am not sure my little chubby toddler no. feet would fit in there, but she'd be really cute if I could get her in there. Good for about <laughs> a day. <laughs> so um, I guess the only other thing I would ask you about is for my audience that doesn't really know about cowboy boots, like I heard you call this part the collar. So could you just tell me kind of what the parts of the boot are? Well, there's, you know, there's different names according to different boot makers as far as, or, yeah. So, okay. so this, what you're seeing down here, this little, this is called a scallop. This decorative piece over here is a collar. You have your tops, a lot of people call them shafts. Then you have your vamp, which is the foot portion of it. Your heel counter around the back, your heel. There's a steel shank that runs inside of a boot. That's a true cowboy boot that's inside internally. 
what you're seeing on the soles of these is the welt, whereas this is a bonded sole. So there's lots of different. Wow. So it just goes on and on. It's like boot college. I had no idea there was so much snow. Okay, so now um, I do have a boot that has like a little sterling silver toe and a sterling silver heel. What's the name of those parts? That's just, you know, it's just a wing tip that some people put on it. It's just everybody has that little extra name that they put on it. So it depends upon the manufacturer and what they're calling it. Well, I'm so excited to have seen your stuff, and I might just have to order myself a pair. Thank you, Diana. Thank you.